this is Clever Sausage. Welcome to my channel. Real juicy news. We're at 4 p.m. every day. We bring you the latest, funniest, bizarre, or outright insane news from both New Zealand and from around the world. So subscribe, subscribe right now, so you never miss out on the latest news online by clicking on a nerd with the bifocal glasses bow tie and two thumbs up don't forget to add your comments below in the comment section and we'll reply to you as soon as we can today I am presenting a book and a video and a link to a source which is establishes um, this particular author and expert in detail. Okay, this is the Sumerian King List. I'm going to read from that book from internetarchive.org because. I found online quite a while back there was a guy called Shaka Amos who actually was um, critiquing someone else and their supposed claims, right? And um, he came across. He spoke about this. This particular guy. According to Nobu Juali and the Circle Seven Quran and the Moors with the Fez, like Bebe with the Fez and them, right? They say that this is where we come from, right? It, they say the, the people here came from here and that Allah is the universal God. But if that's the case, you got to tell me why, number one, Allah don't come from here. Allah don't come from here, from Arabia. Allah comes from here. This is where Allah comes from. Sumer. Sumerian. Here we go. You know who that white boy is? That white boy is Dr. Thorkow Peter Rudolph Jacobson, PhD. Right? In 1927, he got his MA from the University of Copenhagen. 1929, PhD, Oriental Institute, University of Chicago. 1929 to 1937, right? Field Assyriologist for the Iraq Expedition of the Oriental, Oriental Institute at the University of Chicago. 1946, he was the, the director of the Oriental Institute. 1955 to 59, he was the editor of the Assyrian Dictionary. 1962, professor of Assyriology at Harvard University, where he remained until his retirement in 1974. Expert translator, brilliant interpreter, whose insights led to a deeper understanding and appreciation of the institutions and normative references of Sumerian and Akkadian culture. 1974, retired as a professor of Assyriology at Harvard University. 1974, visiting professor at UCLA, helped to develop a strong Assyriology program. His critical edition of the Sumerian King List, published in 1939, and is still the definitive edition. Now that means this is the man that introduced the Sumerian King List. His critical edition is the definitive edition. His translation of Sumerian poetry and his explanations of the intricacies of the Sumerian verbal system illumine these areas with fresh ideas. So that means anytime you're dealing with something, dealing with Sumeria or Assyria or Akkad, you got to go to this man. That's the man that literally wrote the book. So if you ain't dealing with, with Rudolf Jacobson, PhD, we, we can't talk about the subject. Okay. So that's what I am doing. Okay, I went to Wikipedia. Okay, because I was looking for the uh, information, the history behind this man, uh, Thorkill Jacobson, who wrote the Sumerian King List. And he's a little bit here when he was born, and he was a renowned historian specializing in Assyriology and Sumerian literature. He was one of the foremost scholars on the ancient Near East, as the guy in the video, Shaka Amos was saying, right? Okay. 
He received in 1927 an MA from the University of Copenhagen, so he was that Dutch, and he came to the United States to study at the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago, where in 1925, uh, 9, 1929 he received his PhD, so that makes him a qualified expert. He was a field Assyriologist for the Iraq Expedition of the Oriental Institute from 1929 to 1937. And there's more information here. Okay, all his qualifications and you know, his scholarship. Okay, and that's about it. There's some references here. Okay, uh, he read a few other works. Sumerian Kings List. That's the one we're going to look at. Okay, there's a the Kings List there. The Temple Oval, The Intellectual Adventure of Ancient Man Towards the Image of Tammuz and Other Essays, The Treasures of Darkness, A History of Mesopotamian Religion, The Hearts at Once. It's a Sumerian poetry that Shaka Amos was um, talking about. Okay, so I went to Internet Archive and I found that actual book, right? Because for my series uh, in the beginning, from the very beginning, well, I'm going to start at the very beginning. So if as in Genesis, uh, all men gathered in a desert region called Suma or Shina in Genesis, and they proceeded to build a giant or really tall tower, also known as a ziggurat. Okay. Ziggurat. So they wanted to get to the gods or some other reason right so apparently God uh, obviously talking to somebody in heaven right angels or Christ or whatever um, see you know if they can do all of this yeah etc etc so let's go down there amongst them and scatter them uh, confuse their language right break this um, tall tower down etc like that and then um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, confuse their language so they don't understand each other, and then we'll scatter them all over the earth. Okay, this region, uh, Shina or Suma, that they occupied was actually in Syria. Okay, I have a book here called The Timetables of History, the new third edition by Bernard Grun, based upon Werner Stein's. Culture Far Plane, it's the timetables of history, it's chronology, right? And it's um was quite popular in its day. They had some problems, but they finally uh, translated it into English way back then. Okay. And it says here on page two A his history politics height of Sumerian civilization. Okay, what's this? Is it about Sumerian writings? Yeah. Minus 3000 to minus 2501. Semitic tribes occupy Assyria in northern part of the plain of Shina in Akkad. Okay. Height of Sumerian civilization. This is under history and politics. And Sumerian writers, this is under literature, theatre. Section B. Sumerian writing done on clay tablets shows about 2,000 pictographic signs. Earliest Babylonian omen tablets. Sumerian wedge-shaped cuneiform or cuneiform uh, writing the earliest known. Sumerian poetry lamenting the death of Tammuz, the shepherd god. Also, first epic tale of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh epic. Sumerian cuneiform writing. Produces pictographs still in use to about 550. Okay. And in the first libraries in Egypt, script changes from Sumerian style, horizontal left to right, in Semitic style, vertical right to left. So it sounds like these Egyptians adopted it and then they adapted it, right? They found it useful, so they adopted it and they adapted it. So what we're going to do is going to read. I'm going to read from this book, Sumerian Kinglist, by Thorkill Jacobson, 
of the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago, a a Seriological Studies, number 11, the University of Chicago Press, Chicago, Illinois. The University of Chicago Press, it goes on about that. Okay, we'll skip to the next page. It's copyrighted, 1939, looks like it. And it's got dedication here. Here's a preface. A new, uh, probably, in, oh, probably a bit too big. Okay. Okay. The incentive. Okay, here we go. The incentive to the studies here in this book presented was furnished by the excavations of the Oriental Institute at Tel Asmar when, in the seasons of 1931/32, we opened up strata of Agard in early dynastic times. Chronology of these periods naturally occupied our thoughts greatly, and the author felt prompted to resume earlier, more perfunctory studies of the Sumerian kinglist. The main ideas embodied in the present work took shape that season in the evenings, after days spent in the houses and among the remains of the periods with which the kinglist deals. The detailed working out and repeated testing of these ideas have occupied much of the author's time in the years since then. He releases them, although he feels that they will continue to occupy his thoughts for a long time yet, in the sincere hope that they will prove fruitful to other workers in this field and contribute towards better understanding of the innumerable chronological problems which still await solution. The author is indebted to many people for help and encouragement. First of all, to the three men to whom this book is dedicated, to the example of their widely different but all truly scholarly personalities. I, it's Jorkinson, oh much. O. E. Raven, my teacher, is the embodiment, embodiment of his own sober concepts of what scholarship should be and the best mentor to a young Assyriologist could have. As for Edward Chiera, only those who had the good fortune to work with this warm-hearted, vital and inspiring scholar can fully realise how irrefutable, how irreparable a loss our science suffered at his untimely death in 1933. With H. Frankfurt I have been associated through 10 years of work in the field and at home, fruitful years of friendship and free exchange of ideas, which I value highly. Towards the study, the studies here presented here shown a never found interest. And he talks some more. Okay. Talk some more there. Okay. So for the sake of time, we're going to have a look at this. Okay, here's some more here. Okay, here's a table of contents. It's quite a lot there. Some more. List of abbreviations. Introduction. The first fragment of the Sumerian King List of Any Importance was published by Hilprecht in 1906, the second by Skill in 1911. The following ten years saw a steady stream of new material appear. Four important texts were published by Peebles in 1914, two more by Legrand in 1921, and lastly in 1923 came the magnificent World Blundell Prism, which in many respects was too close to close the earlier phase of the study of a document. The interest which is this material aroused in the scientific world was considerable and numerous scholars took up the problem which it presented. Besides the name already mentioned, we might cite Gad, Langdon, Edward Mayer, Thuro Dangan, Ungad Nagd, I don't know how you say that, and many others, as was natural considering the fragmentary state of the material and gradual way in which it accumulated. Uh, that must be accumulated or something. Okay, there's a whole lot of references here. Accumulated. Most of these studies were concerned primarily with the reconstruction of the text. Plenty more information here. Yeah. For the sake of time, we're not going to read every little bit of it. You can do that in your own time. You might find something interesting in there. Okay. Textual, textual problems, the individual manuscripts. The texts which are of importance with the study of the Sumerian king list are the following. Any list them all here. Looks like it's in German up here. Yeah, maybe Dutch. Yeah, 
some problems. Let's skip through all of this because it's quite a lot of reading here. Let's just um, Derivation from a single original. And still more on the textual problems. Okay. Got a detail there. Just a basic general look at it, you know. You can read it in your own time at your own leisure. I mean, you've got to read the whole thing. It'd be like reading the Bible, wouldn't it? Um, okay, yeah. Just have a quick skip through it so you can see what it's like. Get back there, sorry. Just spot it. Critical edition of the text with translation and notes. came across a video was looking for uh, Shaka Moses one of a guy that claimed that um, this Sumerian text fits the Bible matches the Bible okay supposedly but I think a lot of the epics like the epic of Gilgamesh um, and about the flood and creation of that all mythical which the um, Hebrews, the Israelites, the Jews have adopted and then adapted, meaning that they changed some of the names, like um, in the Babylonian cuneiform text, you can have a look at Irving Finkel, I think his name is, and he explains it about the Babylonian text and how uh, this step by step gu uh, guide from one of the gods to a boat builder because um, apparently the gods are going to destroy all humans because they're too noisy and we're cheesing them off so he says build a boat build an ark boat and uh, survive and carry on so uh, in that video it's actually round it's not this pretty Sunday school style um, ark that you've all been told you know, sold on with all the um, giraffes and elephants in that hanging out the windows it's not a sushi roll or a submarine you know, according to these Babylonian texts which are mythical him and a team, Irving Finkel and a team recreated it according to those instructions and he shows you on the video Noah's Ark, Noah's Great Adventure exactly what it looks like it's called a coracle and apparently that's what they still use today in Wales Wales in England. Okay, there's a lot of information there. If you want to take the time and read it all, okay, to fully understand it. Okay, here's a little ditty here. Kish was smitten with weapons as kingship to Uruk was carried, in Uruk, Lugal Zagizi became king and reigned 25 years. See, there's a hell of a lot of information there, so we're just basically covering some of it. This is composition. In the preceding sections, we have tried to trace the main lines in that process of tradition which separates the first edition of the Kingdoms from the late copies of it, which are all we have preserved. It is therefore natural to consider next the problems which centre around this first edition, the original of the Kingdoms. When and when, when and where was it composed? What were its sources and how were they utilised by the author? Date. 
Most of the manuscripts of the king list were written during the second half of the dynasty of Isin, and the currently accepted view is that the list, or some, or since some scholars consider the manuscripts separate compilations, the lists was composed at that period. Okay. Uh, said something about the crucial point here. The crucial point here is the reign of Bursin before this rule of the causative. Yeah, it goes on like that. Yeah, what's this? So I can't really turn it because this doesn't allow it. I don't know how you turn it. There's probably some way to do it. Um, traces of early redactions, the dating thus far obtained, earlier than Bursin and Shushan, is confirmed in our terminus ante. Chem, it must be Latin, moves still higher up when we consider the evidence furnished by traces of earlier redactions which can be found in the manuscripts. Was that rewrites? Or. You can get that word defined. So, fully understand it, don't have any misunderstoods, you get confused and then, yeah, don't know what the hell it means. Um, what's this? We have already earlier mentioned that the formula A to key get to kill whatever it says up here. The city A was smitten with weapons, dominance dominates both of the principal branches of the tradition. It goes on. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Um this is a bit better here. Bit easier to read. Okay, it's about. Uh, let's just see here. Since it is obviously easiest to get hold of sources for the history and older rulers of a city, and that city itself, we can perhaps conclude that the city in which the author of the King List lived must have been one of the three which are dealt with in great detail in its work, namely Kish, Uruk, and Ur. That's where Abraham came from. He was a Chaldean, right? Uh, I've been talking to a Assyrian, and this is what he said. Okay, this is what he said. Okay. Uh, apparently, the Assyrians hate their own history. Uh, he's trying to find uh, an Assyrian guy who speaks English and talks about a history, but as I told you, my own people hate their own history. I was asking him why. Um, he gave me a video of um, some Jews that lived there, Assyrian Jews, Hebrews that we took from Israel at the ancient times. We didn't leave Asher until Arabs kicked them out. Um, okay, and this is in regards to um, an Aramaic, uh, Mesopotamian Aramaic, sorry, a native born. Um, Mesopotamian Aramaic translator uh, filmmaker Victor N. Alexander um, and this guy's confirming that what he's saying on his video uh, the story of Adam and Eve etc he's seen quite a lot of his videos is true okay um, and he's going on about this guy called Sagon Dadesho name meaning Sargon father of Jesus is just the name he knows lost it yeah oh yeah okay but that channel that I sent you Sargon Datesho name meaning Sargon father of Jesus it's just the name lol he knows so much about our history past religion and our new religion Christianity he's from USA he can speak English obviously but he doesn't use much English so our people can understand he uses and reads some English in his videos and translate them into Assyrian and by the way his TV channel so he made this YouTube channel to just put some important things in so they say so they stay um, it's kind of smart and dumb on TV they will disappear but if he did them all on YouTube with English subtitles they will stay but yeah I can't translate them that's going to take forever plus he's he used so much biblical words that I'm not familiar with, with of struggle right 
and he tells me some more information on that. These people saying, oh, you know, all this sort of stuff. And he's saying, no, 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 the Chaldeans came into the country. Because um, I was looking at an old map saying Chaldea was a country. And he said, Chaldeans were not even Mesopotamians. They were, they migrated into our land, Assyria, sometime between 948 60 BCE. So did other tribes such as Aramaeans. They appeared. Okay, they appeared. You have to go to that. You have to go to there. To have a look at it. Yeah, they appeared, and apparently they caused trouble. They were like um, practice of witchcraft and all this sort of stuff, magic and whatever. Um, yeah, well, I guess that could verify that ebook that's out there, the Abrahamic magic. M A G I K or the mosaic magic and all that sort of stuff, but yeah, I reckon it's pseudo pseudopigrapher. Okay, um, back to Sigmund Kings. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of information here, as I was saying. General character of the sources. And it goes on and on. May not be a book you really want to read because you know, it's a lot of say, mathematical formulas type stuff, but. You never know. It gives you that knowledge, you know, of the first people, supposedly the first nation, you know, the first language, the first writing, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I don't know how many pages it's got. Um, looks like 233 pages. A lot of reading. Okay. Look at the last page. Last couple of pages. Oh, there's the index. Again, so you can browse through it. Go back a bit. Connection of databool dynasties with those in the kingless pr proper. The reign of Utu Higal. Okay. Whoever that guy was. Oh my gosh, look at this. Okay. There's an index here. And all the words here. Abba. Hadian influence on Sumerian. Yeah, well, the Sumerian come first, I guess. Um, the Akkadians maybe inbred them out. You know, they slowed these uh, Sumerians gradually faded away, and then the Akkadians had adopted and adapted their language to their uh, uh, for their needs. Um, and then uh, the Babylonians come along, and I think they ended up like uh, maybe wiping a lot of them out. And then they've adapted and adopted, and just went on like that. And then you got the Assyrians, right? Then you got the uh, Mesopotamians, and, like, the Chaldeans, and the Hebrews, or like, whatever, that adopted and adapted their stuff. The, the Sumerian myths, the Babel Arcadian and Babylonian myths. Right, myths, right, um, yeah, and just change it, basically change the names, like from Upechim, the guy who um, supposedly sailed an ark, right, on a flood, which um, was on the waters for six days or something like that, or sat on a mountain for six days and six nights, uh, whereas the Hebrews and that changed it, and the Bible changed it to, um, appear to have changed it to 40 days and 40 nights. And everyone says it's a um, historical fact, you know, because supposedly Roy, what's his name? Oh, I forgot that guy's name. Um, he was debunked. He found the um, Ark on um, I think it was Mount Ararat or something like that. Yeah, and then he found um, uh, the Holy Seat or something under the, with, with supposedly in Jerusalem where the um, cross of Christ was placed you know, and he bled out and went all over this holy seat and all this sort of stuff he tested the DNA and apparently was still living and had like um, instead of having the normal chromosomes he um, lacked the male one so he had about 22 or something like that yeah it's been a while since I looked at that information um, yeah there's a lot of um, 
things you can look up here Assyrian chronology Asher Banapal Asher Asher Temple right um, what have we got here maybe the wing disc ice con I don't know I don't really know if they've got that in here probably somewhere and the W okay no nothing okay wing disc item icon no I can't see it Yeah, have a look at it. You might find it interesting. You might not. You might learn something. You might not. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah, a good one to go and look at is um. Uh, Irving Finkel. Yeah, it's it looks like Santa Claus. You know, um, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. But yeah, it's pretty humorous old professor um, expert you know um, yeah so hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it that you'll take the time to read this okay if uh, put it in your arsenal of knowledge um, you know as I said uh, I basically started well I basically started a series um, more for personal use but I, I like to share you know um, yeah um, in the beginning from the very beginning and I thought yeah I'd start from the very very beginning um, the supposed big bang or God makes something out of nothing you know and then go through the Bible uh, through the myths the Sumerian the Akkadian the Babylonian the Assyrian uh, yeah, and then then start on the uh, original, supposed original manuscripts, right? Um, from the Assyrian Aramaic, or Lushana Atika, uh, Asherit, um, what the Assyrians actually call Lushana Supraya. Um, they've got many different names for it. I've been told by this guy. Um, it's Assyrian I'm talking to. Yeah, so my. He's um, made me think again you know um, and, and I appreciate them because I've learned some extra information from them. anyway um, so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and um, yeah by tapping on the geek with the glasses the, bifo the bifocals and the two thumbs up um, and add your comments below tell us what you thought of this okay it's very brief because it's, there's just too much information here for me to go through it it'll take me years right to read word for word and fully understand it so yeah if you want to read it read it in your own time and um, you may learn something yeah so enjoy and we'll see you on the next video